The Tundra Biome by Ansley Brown. This image highlights the parts of the world in which you can find the tundra biome. The tundra begins just below the ice caps of the Arctic and extends across North America to Europe, Siberia, and much of Canada and Alaska. This biome can also be found at the tops of mountains as temperatures are typically cooler at higher altitudes. The tundra is a treeless biome where the climate is cold and windy and rain is scant. The tundra is covered in snow for much of the year, but summer can bring on beautiful bursts of wildflowers. The tundra has an annual rainfall average of anywhere from 15 to 25 centimeters. The average summer temperature is anywhere from negative 34 to 12 degrees Celsius, and during the winter, temperatures can get as low as negative 50 degrees Celsius. The long, dark winters last for several months with little to no daylight in some areas. Pictured is a climatogram of the Arctic tundra. From this graph, we can infer that when temperatures are higher, precipitation tends to be lower in the tundra. The word tundra means treeless, so most of the plants you find in the tundra grow close to the ground. Cotton grass, Labrador tea, Arctic willow, caribou moss, Arctic poppy, and Arctic moss are all a part of the tundra biome. These plants all have specific adaptations to be able to survive the brutal weather of the tundra. You will find that some plants have a fuzzy wax coating. This is used to shield them from the cold and the wind. It also protects the plant to allow for reproduction. Most plants have small leaves which help them to better retain moisture. Plants in the tundra have to have a shallow root system because only the surface of the tundra thaws out. Any deeper than that is permafrost. These plants also have long life cycles to balance out the short period in which they can grow. The tundra is also home to many animals. The brown bear, polar bear, caribou, wolverine, arctic fox, snowy owl, and musk oxen can all be found in the tundra. In order to survive the conditions of the tundra, the animals have to adapt. Animals found in the tundra tend to have larger bodies and shorter limbs and tails in order to retain heat better and prevent heat loss. Birds have adapted to have two coats of feathers to keep them warm as well. Many other animals have thick, warm fur. Insects will spend practically their whole lives buried in the ground for shelter from the weather. Some animals, like bears, will even hibernate in the winter to keep out of the coldest weather. Biotic and abiotic factors of the tundra depend solely off of one another. If the abiotic factors were to change, then the biotic factors would suffer. And if the biotic factors were to change, they would not be able to survive the abiotic factors, meaning the biome would be uninhabitable. The sun is what allows for producers to grow. The producers are then eaten by herbivores, such as the arctic hare, caribou, and lemming. The herbivores are eaten by carnivores, such as the arctic fox, snowy owl, polar bear, and arctic wolf. Carnivores, such as the arctic fox and the snowy owl, are then eaten by the tertiary consumers, the polar bear and the arctic wolf. Some non-renewable resources that can be found in the tundra are coal, natural gas, oil, and fossil fuels. Some renewable resources that can be found here are wind, water, solar energy, and plants. Humans use coal to generate electric power, natural gas for heating, oil for electricity in vehicles, and fossil fuels to produce electricity. Humans have to have water to survive. We use wind and solar energy for generating electricity, and plants are vital in the food chain and life. They can be eaten or feed an animal that a human would eat, and they produce oxygen for us to breathe. There are many changes going on in the tundra that we should be aware of. Humans are destroying the tundra biome. Global warming is causing the permafrost that is below the base layer of Earth to melt. The biotic factors of this biome have adapted to live with the permafrost, so its melting would be detrimental to them. Not only is it already naturally melting, but oil, gas, and mining industries are drilling into the permafrost, further damaging it. In order to slow the melting of the permafrost, we need to slow global warming. We can do this by limiting or cutting out the use of fossil fuels. We should also work to ban or limit industrial activities in the tundra.